ko sa lahat. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Na traffic. Sino na traffic? Ako, kagabi. Grabe. Friend, ang hirap no. Tatlong oras. Galing airport. Palaban. <laughs> Oo, grabe. But I'm very, very happy to be here. And I, uh, I really thank uh, PISCN and uh, of course, PIDS for inviting me. Um, I wear two hats today, but the second hat I uh, don't have to use it because Silima University is already part of PASCN. So I just came home um, a little over three months ago. I was based in Madrid. I was with Universidad Complutense, uh, but uh, I'm away. <laughs> Pag mga mentor natin, grabe yung ano eh, pull eh. Kahit okay ka na doon, parang umuwi ka. Tumulang ka sa bahay, bayan mo. Oh, oh. Hashtag. Love ko ang bayan ko. Uh, hashtag palaban sa bayan. Ayun. So, I came home. Um, and so, but, but the, the, the hat that I really wear today is as the country representative of the Marie Curie um, Alliance. This is an alliance of Marie Curie fellows all over the world. Uh, so, how many of you have heard of Marie Curie? Pala. Yeah, 40%. Okay na din yun. Pasado. Okay, so hopefully by the end of, of today, all of you will uh, will know about Marie Curie, but you're also encouraged to to be a Marie Curie fellow. Um, one of the frustrations that I have uh, that I have right now is maliit lang yung Marie Curie fellows na coming from the Philippines. In fact, when we have um, alumni gatherings, ako lang kisa, so that has to change. Okay, and I will explain uh, that uh, a bit more. Uh, in the in the next hour, okay. So, what will you hear from me today? Uh, first of all, you will hear about H2020, Horizon 2020, which is the research and collaboration uh, program, this greatest program of of the EU. Um, there are over 80 billion euros uh, in grants available. That is apart from uh, other grants as well that each member state has. So, Europe is known for research. Uh, it is known for discovery. It is known to, to really propel innovation. Uh, it likes ans uh, you know, asking the difficult questions and encourages really uh, having collaborations uh, outside of their borders. Okay, So um, that's why they want to extend uh, to the Philippines. So when it comes to Asia, the Philippines, I would say, is a little bit behind when it comes to collaborations with uh, EU. Okay, so when, when it comes to the European Union, ang namamayag pag talaga, you have um, uh, Thailand, uh, it's very good. Uh, Vietnam is, is very good as well. Uh, Indonesia, Malaysia. We have a little bit, um, and you will see some examples, but we could do so much more. I, I think the presence of, of all of you here is testament to the fact that we have really a very, very strong research community. Now, what we hope to encourage and what uh, I hope to uh, to get from you by the end of the session is that all of you who are representing your universities or your research institutions would be be really submitting proposals and to really have this collaboration. But let me convince you first why you should join Horizon 2020. The second part of my talk uh, would be about, um, I will also talk about the Mercury. Uh, and then later on, mayro kayo kayong health break eh, according to your. Kalau <laughs> direct direct show hindi sabi ni Mela, importante din yung health break kasi of course it's for your health. So, <laughs> so there will be a little bit of a pause, but after that, I hope everybody has access to the internet because I want to show you exactly how to join the portal. I mean, that is of, of course assuming ako eh, assuming na convinced ko na kayo. And the tutorial ko na kayo kung paano paano mag-apply. Okay? And then uh, you can ask some questions uh, maybe about the, the scientific process and what to put, what not to put, and all that. Okay? But let me let me try to convince you first. Okay, so um, I will talk, the, my first talk will be on these four things. Uh, of course, on Horizon 2020. And then let's situate it, let's localize it to, to the Philippines, Philippines age 2020. And, and then let's see where we are and what have we done when it comes to this uh, this program. Kasi hindi naman, meron naman, meron naman nag-apply, nag meron naman engagement, pero it would be, let's say, 5% of the 100% that you want, okay? So that is why PASCN and this, uh, and, and this 
prove this is real. The people in this room are very, very critical to me. And then you have the Marisco Dos Curie action. So it's named, of course, after the famous Marie Curie. Uh, so these are grants. Um, so far, they've told me that out of um, the many people who apply for this, uh, the failure rate is, uh, the success rate, pala, the success rate is 13%. Okay, so, uh, but I don't want you to be discouraged with that. Kasi magagaling naman lahat ng mga tao dito. So, uh, it's just a matter of like, maybe uh, presenting, you know, presenting your proposal in such a way that it connects, you know, to what is asked. So, uh, don't, do not think of it as daunting, you know, it's like, it's just like taking the bar or taking the board. Tayo tayo, yak, 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 yak. So it's just a matter of familiarizing ourselves with how, how it works. And then, of course, we'll talk about societal challenges. The idea of the EU, of the, sorry, of the EU is that, my other hat. <laughs> the idea of the EU uh, is that it really addresses issues, current issues. So we live in a very, very interconnected uh, world. So what happens uh, in Germany also affects us in the Philippines and vice versa. And this is the reason why they have specific calls that, uh, that have been identified because of you know, focus group discussions that they've had or reports that have, that have reached them about uh, challenges that we face. So I will discuss it a bit more uh, in the next minutes. Okay, so let's start with the rise in 2020. So just a little bit about the European Union. There are 500 million people, 28 countries, one single market, okay? So, 6% of the world's population, mas marami pa tayo sa, ano, sa karamihan sa mga countries nila na, rep na represented. 20% though of the world's expenditure on research. They're very, very good at research. And 27% of the world's scientific uh, publications, 32% of high-impact publications, and 32% of patent applications. How many of you are representing uh, organizations or institutions who have patent already? Oh, one. Great. <laughs> we'll make that 100% or so by the end of the session. Okay, so of course, they say they have some of the best universities uh, in the world. Pero mas alam natin Ivy League, no? May mas diba mas alam natin Ivy League. But actually, they, 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 have, uh, they have much older ones than those who are in the Ivy League. Pero mas ano tayo sa US eh. So they have um, really, really good schools. I went to several schools there. Um, and I think uh, that's, that's, the, that's the strength if, if you come from there. It's a lot of, you know, old, very, very old. You know, yung parang talagang where the, the thinking comes from, you know, uh, where these, uh, the, the richness of, of academic uh, and scientific uh, thought. You know, that, that, that's really emanating from there. And of course, some of the innovative companies uh, in the world. Okay, para akong ano, no? <laughs> para akong ka-EU. <laughs> okay, what is Horizon 20? Your Horizon 2020 is basically your gateway. It's like this gateway uh, to European research and innovation. And it is open to the world, okay? So they, they love to say it's open to everybody. Um, it's very important to focus on the thing that is really on research and innovation. So a while ago, there was mention of the fourth industrial revolution, diba? There's even talk of the fifth already in Europe. So it's, it's very interesting how we can col collaborate together when it comes to these changes going on. Um, of course, Horizon 20 welcomes researchers and institutions, public and private, okay, all over the world. And there are three priority areas. First is excellent science. So this one is uh, very researcher driven. So people in this room. So it, is, it talks about you know technologies, jobs, well-being. The second one is industrial leadership, and this is interesting because it focuses on um, investments in technologies. You you uh, you've had uh, again the fourth industrial revolution. We always talk about automation. So we have uh, we're losing. Um, a lot of the jobs that are that are present right now, and uh, we will be replaced, they say, uh, by robots. So uh, a couple of was it last year or a couple of months ago, there was already one robot who uh, graduated from a top uh, top Jap Japanese university, 
So in his, his exams, and uh, so he is really a graduate for all intents and purposes of this Tokyo University, okay? And then you also hear about a, a robot who passed the Turing test. So the Turing test is a test so that uh, you know we can dis discern whether a person is human or a robot. But the robot already passed it. So how do you how do you know? So if you go to the computer, that's why you're you're asked to click on click on the cars or click on the parking signs uh, because I need to know that you're not a robot, right? And there's a captcha that you have to you have to follow. But there are already robots that can that can surpass that. That can. <laughs> So where do you draw the line now? And also, 60% of the primary school, uh, those who enter primary school this year, they will be in jobs that have not, that do not exist yet. Okay, so that is why we have to really invest and we really have to uh, get our heads together and how we can remain competitive and how we can survive basically in this, uh, in this context. And third, of course, societal challenges. So there's a lot of uh, challenges, and um, well, the reason why I was uh, why I was late yesterday was actually not because of the Chinese, uh, not, not because of China, but actually because of what's his name, Samuel? Is it Samuel? Yeah, it's because of Samuel, not not, not of the other guy. <laughs> because we have a typhoon, so. We are, um, you know, typhoons really love us, so we have 20 or more, give or take, every year. And so um, that's a problem. So we have, and but that's also a problem not only for us, but also, also in Europe. They also have their, their problems. That's why one of the priority areas is on societal challenges. Okay, so the EU, as you know, a little bit of a history lesson. <laughs> we have the EU member states, and I'll tell you why I, I talk about this later on. EU member states are 28, and there are associated countries, and there are 16 of them, including uh, including Switzerland, which is not a part of the EU because you know it's neutral, and, and then you have even uh, Turkey, which is like both Asia and Europe. So these are the associated countries and the, the EU member states. You know it already from your history class, uh, but this is important because when you apply for a grant, they have to be included. Okay, that's why I'm mentioning it. That's not just because of the history lesson. Okay, and why you should participate? Well, I have seven reasons. First is ambitious research and innovation projects, which is precisely the reason why you are part of the PASN, and precisely the reason why we are in this swanky office, so please. I love your office, by the way. I can see myself working here. Second, <laughs> second is mobility to Europe, okay? So, um, uh, as we said, you know, this is the birthplace of a lot of, of academic thought and a lot of things that, a lot of uh, ideas that we now use, you know, so um, it's great also to, to go there. You can go there, you can study there, um, you can do your research there, uh, and you can basically have a full life uh, also in Europe. But you come back, okay? <laughs> Make sure you come back. Third, access to new networks and alliances. So. This is, this is a network, and this is a very, very good network. And I hope that we, we really use this network as, as we go forward with the EU and also with the APEC, uh, APEC applications as for grants. Uh, one of the greatest things of H Horizon 2020 is that you become a part of the network. So uh, for me, I'm able to survive as a, uh, as a scientist, but also as a practitioner, because of the Marie Curie uh, network. Because these are people from, you know, from different um, different realms, you know, they, they come from uh, nanotechnology to, you know, to um, somebody uh, researching on the, on how to s slow down the effects of aging and, and somebody who's like making a, a robot talk and to somebody who's like uh, regenerating, you know, um, new arms and new legs and you see this and you have like coffee with them and it's fascinating and then you find out that there are things that you can actually work together uh, so the focus of the EU net right now is, is transdisciplinary and I think that should be the way that we should do things here because it cannot now it cannot be just one uh, discipline like okay this is sociology so all of those who are not sociologists so, but now the focus is really on working together, getting your hands together. 
I was once a part of the European Research Center for Information Systems. I, my, my, back, my background is on international relations, but I was part of this group, all of, uh, of information scientists. And their idea was exactly that. The, net, the name of the network was Evolution, which was on networks. But networks, not just networks in the context of information uh, technology, but also networks in the context of uh, uh, biology, in the context of uh, business administration, in the context of engineering. So how do we see networks? And it was incredible what we found out you know, together on a transdisciplinary basis. One of the things that we found out, for example, is that um, one of the research made was what ties people together. So there was one study on the political science uh, side. They, um, there was always a group that voted the same, always the same, but they came from different backgrounds, um, different, different uh, ages, different political affiliations, uh, different geographical areas, but they always voted the same. So somebody made a, a network map and, find, and did an analysis on why is it, why, why do these people um, uh, you know, vote the same way uh, when it comes to parliament, because they were in the lo local parliament, local assembly. And you know what they found out? These people, during the breaks, they go out for a smoke. So when they smoke, they gather around the same place, which can't go just anywhere. There's just a specific place where you can smoke. So they gather there, and then they said, what do you think about what he said? Ah, I think it's bullshit. Like, but what about that one? Oh, I think that makes sense, you know? And then, so when they go back, the tendency was very high that they were in a consensus. And when they came back, they had the same idea. But who would have thought? They came from different areas, different affiliations, different beliefs. But because of smoking, of course, I'm saying no to smoking, but that's, no, no. According to our president, uh-uh, no, no. But this is anything, it's incredible what, what, can, what, what are the nodes, really? What are the, these things that connect us? It's not, sometimes it's not the usual thing. It could be like, uh, uh, it could be where we shop, for example, right? We shop in the same place, somehow our choices are influenced by that. Or our choice of um, TV station. It could be that. So it's important that we collaborate so that we find out these connections that we have. Next, um, access to world-class research uh, infrastructures. I'm always amazed by how uh, Europe has all of these high-tech things, you know, uh, that sometimes you don't know how to use yet. So um, all, these, uh, all these simulations that you can do. But, however, we, have, we, we are starting to do that here in the Philippines. We are starting to, you know, to have all these things as well. But when it comes to, especially when it comes to laboratories, you know, the best laboratories in the world, that's one of those things that uh, would entice you. Of course, new business opportunities and visibility of your research. What is uh, one of the most important things that um, the Barikari Alliance uh, is working on is bridging science to industry. Because one of the main problems that you have a great idea and you operate this idea, you make it into one incredible product, but then that's it. Like you can't, you can't bring it to market because you're very far away from uh, from corporate or from those who would really, you know, fund it. So one of the most important things there is to bridge this gap between science and industry, between science and uh, and sustainable implementation. Okay. The other thing, of course, is to tackle, tackle global challenges together. So can you imagine the greatest minds of, of the Philippines or the greatest minds of Europe, you know, finding, uh, finding ways that we do not have a repeat of Hayan or Yolanda, okay? So there's a lot of things that, that we can work on. And of course, uh, why we are here, research funding, <laughs> research funding. I have to say, though, um, there, is, there is more of a, it's easier um, to to be a network when you apply because it's stronger. You know, you have you have more heads and you have more uh, you have more expertise. So I'm just saying. I mean, of course, you are. All of your institutions are welcome to apply directly. But as was said by the director a while ago, when you apply as a network, for example, as PASCN, there's there's much more sense to that because 
then you, you, you really have like the best minds together, the best heads together. Okay, so just something for you to think about. All right, so how do you participate? There are two ways. First, as individual researchers, you can do that. You know, you can just go and say, well, I, my expertise is in nanotechnology. I want to be a part of a research group in, in Duisburg, for example, in Germany. You can do that, or you can do a collaborative project. So a collaborative project, you need three legal entities, include, excluding yourself. So ikaw yung pang apat. Okay? And these are, and that is why I showed you the EU and the associated countries, because they have to be a part of that. So I already prom promised Director Francis that I'll help um, make sure that you, you have, you know, inroads at least when it comes to EU partners so we can help you, um, help the ASCN introduce to possible um, partners in Europe. Okay, depending on, you know, which grant we, we plan to do so. But one thing, for example, we had, a, uh, those who attended the ACE 2020, we already have, um, Karina was one of the speakers, she's working on mobility, on, uh, sorry, gender equality. Uh, and uh, women's economic, I think it's women's uh, empowerment inside university. So she's part of this uh, huge alliance and she's looking for partners. So that's that's one. Okay, so um, uh, so and as soon as, as, as they ask more, then, then uh, we, will, we will let the ASCN know and, and fix them. Okay, so don't worry about that if you haven't uh, EU projects. I mean, it's always, the beginning is always difficult, but once you're there, I'm sure it will be okay. Next, so um, where does uh, the Horizon 2020, uh, where can you find funds for individual research? So of course you have the ERC, which is the European Research Council. So they have a lot of grants. If you look at the internet, they always like post all of these, uh, all of these grants. And then of course, uh, what I was a part of, which is the, uh, the MSCA, which is the Malay School of Strategy Action. So this is the mobility of researchers and technical staff. I will explain it a bit more uh, in the next slides. So these are, sorry, these are opportunities for research who are going to Europe, individual researchers who are going to Europe. You can avail of these two main, uh, main things. Now, how about the collaborative project? So with a co collaborative project, you have to be a legal entity. Uh, you know, of course you are all legal, you are a legal legal. So, and you, so you can receive funding, and then you can even be the head of the project. So uh, just because it's got the funds are coming to you, it doesn't mean that they, they will have to be the head of the project. You could actually uh, be the ones uh, coordinating the project. So, but this is very important. So th that there has to be three participants from different EU member states or associated countries, and then you are the fourth. Okay, so you have to have three, three participants. But as I said, we can we can explore that together, especially through the network and especially through Gates. Okay, let's see now where the Philippines is when it comes to um, the Horizon 2020 and what are the specific opportunities that are there uh, right now. Okay, but please bear in mind that from from uh, as as the days uh, go by, they will open more grants. And I will show you in the second session how you can find these grants. So these are just the things that are uh, that uh, that are happening right now. But it's very very dynamic, you know. They, tomorrow they could open something on uh, something on rice. Actually, there is one uh, on rice evolution. They, there's a bilateral grant. I'll talk about it uh, in the second session. Okay. So basically, Europe is inviting international partners to participate in these five. Uh, five areas, so access to markets, um, access to knowledge, they attract talent and investment, you have to, uh, to, for you to be able to have a more visible global profile, and for be better research and exploitation. So the general rules, of course, automatically funded are the member states, associated countries, and the countries listed in Annex A of the work program. Um, whenever you go to a participant portal, and don't worry, I'll show you in the second session how to go about that, there's an Annex A, and it is stated there which countries are automatically funded, but you have to send a proposal, of course, it's not automatic. It's not automatically meaning to say you already have access, like you don't have to do anything else, you're already there, Philippines are already there. 
but you have just have to send a proposal. So there is an Annex A that you have to look at. If the country, if the Philippines is there, then all you need to do is send a proposal. But um, there are other there are other ways that you can get funded. If, if for example, there is a program on waste management um, and the Philippines is not there, you can still try if, it, if there is an agreement between two funding bodies that you can include the Philippines or there is a provision or there is a, or the commission decides, yeah, the Philippines has to, is not in the list, but we want the Philippines to be a part of it. So the good thing is we have, uh, Mela, I think, met uh, Fermina, uh, and you met Luis May. Anyway, um, we will provide the, uh, also the, the people that you can, you can maybe ask questions to. There is a service facility that's been um, hired by the European Commission that you can contact when you have like technical questions and maybe questions that I, I, I cannot answer. So there is a, a, an email and a contact uh, detail that I, I, I will send um, to PICS regarding this. Okay, so in the Philippines, so far, okay, and this is uh, uh, from that date, there were five participations. I didn't know, Baba, no? <laughs> I'm Baba from Hit Solo. <laughs> when I look at the presentations of other countries, we're like, oh, bucket. <laughs> diba? So we, we have to change these guys. So we have to really change this. So there are four uh, that are in the pillar of excellent science and, and one in the pillar of societal challenges. So Talawa doon, Marie Skodowska, Piri Actions, and then two on research infrastructures, and one Europe in a changing world. Okay, so, so far, we've been given 90,000 euros. How many yun? In, in, in Philippine pesos. How many are you? How many? 60, how many? Oh, but 80 billion euros in grants, eh. Layo, no? Diba? So, kung maka 1 billion, <laughs> pwede mong gawing ano yun. 1 billion euros yung target. So, that's just 90,000 euros. It's a good start. Yes, Bella? Um, do you have the list of the five euros? Yeah, I, I can show you. <laughs> so, so yun, um, meron, uh, meron, the Advanced Science Technology, Technology Institute, do you know them? Yeah. So they've already had two participations as a research organization. And then at the day of Manila, RAP2 yeah. University, they've had one, and I know the principal um, investigator, uh, who he's, he's more on like religion and, and, and culture. Uh, so. They applied as a, of course, as a university. So dalawa. Um, these are the ones that have been, that have uh, funding. So yung competing regional integrations in Southeast Asia. So if you see, there are twelve partners from twelve countries, and they are not. Uh, Philippines is not the coordinator. It's France that's the coordinator, and the local partner is Ateneo de Manila University. So the EU gave two point five million euros for this for this project, and it is still going on until 2020. So if you want to look at the site, that's the, that's the site. You will get my slides anyway. I mean, if Prince is allowing that. <laughs> yes. Naman. Naman, ibi PDF lang po natin, ha, para hindi mo ano. Bakit ka din Facebook? So, yeah, so just go to the website. You can look at uh, what it is, uh, the content, but uh, this is from one of the but this is easier because the coordinator is already the EU. So maybe my suggestion would be, siguro as an entry point, we piggyback on on one of the existing ones. They usually put and then in second uh, in the second uh, session I will show you. Uh, there's already there's always a call for partners. So um, usually you respond to the call. It's easier because they're coordinating it. So basically you just do the work package that is assigned to you. And uh, yeah, they, they deal with the rest. Okay, so it's it's less things, especially when it comes to the financial aspects, the documentation is much, much easier. But later on, dapat, we, we target na tayo yung coordinator. But for now, just to get our, our you know our foot in the door, then we can do that. There's another one. Uh, so uh, yeah, so this is uh, Crisea, Crisea. Um, so yung gusto nila i-approach us on the uh, security issues. And so they have like an interdisciplinary research on environment, economy, state, identity, and region. And it's interesting here, and I want to show this, there, there are transversal themes. They like these very much, but transversal. 
So they have transversal themes, migration, gender, and security. So the way the EU works usually um, is that they, they do it in work packages. So mas padali kasi yon pag work package. So let's say the work package on migration will be handled by Lyceo. And then the work package on communication and dissemination will be handled by Xavier University, for example. So it's easier to, to do the metrics and it's easier to, to track um, you know, the, the, the chart when it comes to successes because it's a work package. Siya. Usually, yun yung approach, which is very different, I think, from the US one. So, sa kanila, work package. Okay? Uh, meron ding dream. And this is a RISE project. And this is interesting uh, for you, for, especially for you who are part of uh, academic institutions. So, the dream project is on improving emotional, mental, and physical well being in independently living older adults. So, there are seven partners from seven countries. So again, the coordinator is not the Philippines, so it's Italy. Meron na local partner, which is the UP, UP system. Okay, so this is uh, slightly less than the one that Ateneo, uh, I mean the Ateneo uh, group got. And this is running until 2019. So ito yung mga countries na, so seven partners in seven countries. And again, it's like per work package. So you could also look at RISE, and I will discuss that uh, a bit more later. So, I think we talked about this. Okay, so when you participate, usually international participation is targeted by specific program elements. So, first, um, you should see that it should indicate that the participation of international partners is encouraged, and that um, it should indicate that particip participation of partners from a certain country or region is encouraged or even mandatory. So, the you have to look at, the, basically, you have to look at the call uh, if it's looking for these, these items. So, for now, for example, ito yung parang targeted, uh, targeted uh, activities uh, when it comes to the way they do their grants. So, if you look at the Philippines, meron silang bias towards smart, green, and integrated transport. It doesn't stop there, though. It's just that, it, this is just part of the, the history of how, how it is. So, as opposed to, for example, sa U.S., meron sila nanotechnology, health, marine, energy, transport, disaster risk uh, reduction. So sa atin, uh, on transport, right? But it doesn't mean that it's, it stops there. Because they, as I said, there are calls that they want international partners, and it's, it's like in, in other topics as well. So right now, meron targeted cooperation with the Philippines, and it's on transport. So it's... Uh, it's already, it was already open. I don't know who's seen it that respond dito. Baka DP. DP. DP Manila is here. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. But maybe that, but I haven't heard of it yet. Okay. But you can you can try to, to look for it. So this is like targeted to the Philippines, this partnership. But as I said, there are other ways for you to participate. There are other entry points of participation. And this is a, uh, this is how the participant portal looks like. And we will open that together a bit later on. So there's always like a call summary. So for example, this is on the uh, green vehicles. So transport, you echo transport, you focus nila for the Philippines. So when it comes to the pillar on societal challenges, if you remember, there are different pillars. So when it comes to the pillar of societal challenges for the Philippines, we have this that we can participate in. But as I said, there are other entry points that you can be a part of. Okay. So yan yung societal challenges. Now, ito yung interesting. Kasi ito yung naman. Ito yung alam na alam ko. Yung uh, Marie Curie, uh, Marie Skudowska Curie actions. So, what do they offer? So first is opportunities for training and career development. Um, one of the most important, if not the fundamental uh, import, uh, uh, core thing of the Marie Curie is there has to be mobility. Meaning to say, you have to move. Okay, so if you are based in the Philippines, you have to go to Spain, you have to go to Switzerland, you have to go to Italy, ganyan. Hirap, no? Grabe. So you have to be, you have to be mobile, all right? 
And, um, and these are the principles of the Marikuri. It's open to all career stages and nationalities. So you could be a beginning researcher, or you could be a senior researcher, or you could be a director of an institute. There's a bottom-up approach. So it's really like the idea comes from you. Unlike the societal challenges, na identify na nila eh. So for, uh, for the Philippines, they identified, okay, it's going to be green transport. When it comes to Marie Curie, you propose. Yeah, like if you say, okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about um, the four Ps, for example. So that could be like the proposal that you, that you give. But it has to fit in the general theme, okay? But basically, it's a bottom-up approach. It's international, intersectoral, and interdisciplinary. And there's, a, of course, there's knowledge exchange. Tanong, I'm sure, like the, always a question. Meron ba age limit? Yon. Walang age limit. Okay. So that's a great thing about it kasi marami sa atin parang we're career researchers pero uh, gusto na natin, kunyari, okay, I finally decided to do a, a PhD. Uh, but the DAD or yung sa to, uh, IFL scholarships hanggang 30 lang. Diba? Uh, pag merong, if you are a woman, tapos uh, nagkaanak ka, pwede yung i-extend, 35. You can start your PhD. But in the case of the Marie Curie, of course, depending on saan ka mag-a-apply, no? Kasi hindi ka naman pwede mag-early mag, uh, stage researcher, tapos you're already, oh, parang medyo ano ka na, di ba? So, but usually, in most cases, wala siyang limit. So, wala siyang age limit. You just have to fit the level. So, kung nagsastart ka pa lang sa career mo, wag ka na, wag, wag ka na bang mag-apply sa senior researcher. Diba? So, you, the idea is for you to be in the level where you're comfortable and you can also, also grow. Alright? Okay, so, there are main funding lines when it comes to the Marie Curie. One is an individual fellowship. It brings you to Europe for 12 to 36 months. And your host does not have to be a university. It could be industry. So if you are, for example, uh, into engineering, and you're saying, okay, I want to be hosted by uh, Volkswagen, for example. So you can do that. So it doesn't have to be uh, Lyceum University and uh, let's say a Trento, University of Trento in Italy. There, of course, that's the usual one. But if you want to learn from an industry, that can also be arranged. So you can also have, let's say, um, uh, a second vent in, ano ba ganda na ano? Like, uh, CERN. Kaya pa CERN talagang research eh. So pwede, pwede talaga. Yung parang hindi, it's not usual. Let's say, the United Nations in Vienna. Let's say, let's put it that way. So you can have that as part of the, you know, uh, part of the industry. Or you could go to, maybe you are into looking at SMEs and you can you can look at export, for example. So you want to be assigned at the Galilees Lafayette in, in, in Paris. It could be done. That, that could be done. Okay? So, or you want to say, um, yeah, I want to look at how trade works, you know? So you can be, uh, you can be um, at the El Corte Inglés. Oh, yes, oh, the WTO as well. So that can be arranged. Okay, so depende, hindi lang siya academia. Uh, and that's the great thing about it because that's, that's really the idea. You have to bridge science and industry. Yun yung missing link. Eh. And then, this one, I'm particularly encouraging PASCN uh, and the members of the network to apply kasi mas madali yung rice. The rice is really exchange. It's international and intersectional cooperation. So there is a, an exchange of all types of staff, not only academic staff. So you can have staff in research, or you could have staff in administration, diba? registrar, kunyari, or admissions officer, recruitment officer. Uh, but it could also be administrative and technical staff. And I like this part because most of the time, you nabibigyan ng pagkakataon, faculty, but we shouldn't forget as well our support staff because, you know, we can't do the things that we do if, if not for the support staff. That's why I like this part very much. Because, uh, like, I've, I've been home, 
I've been back in Silliman for three months. I can already identify a lot of staff members who are brilliant and who would really uh, benefit from this exchange. So also look at you know people that are working you know outside of uh, of the teaching, outside of the instruction, and see if they can benefit from Manicure Diaz. There is also uh, the ITN or the Innovative Training Network, and this is for your new, yung parang bagong bago lang na researcher. So if you have been a researcher for less than four years, then you can apply for the Manicure ITN. Ang dami nito ngayon. If you look at the website, ang dami ina offer na ITN at this moment. So you can take a look and then you, this is for individual research. So you can apply directly as an individual researcher. And then there's also such a thing as co-fund. And this is providing for funding, uh, you know, for, for these other um, partnerships. The great thing is with the co-fund, all stages of um, research career. So you could be an expert or you could be like... Uh, you could want, want to be the principal investigator or just a part of the of the of the consortium. So, Merong IF, which is an individual fellowship, and this is for an experienced researcher. Okay, and what you do is um, you create your proposal, and uh, the great thing is that when you go there, you are you are practically part of the of the work system. So, nagtatabaw ka talaga doon. And so you enjoy all of the, you know, all of the things that the workers in, in Europe enjoy. Okay? So, for example, um, you get uh, social security. Um, in, in, I can say specifically for, for Germany, they have a dual career program. So if you are a, if you are married and uh, most likely your, your, your spouse or your partner is um, has you know expertise of her own so the university or your host will always try to find a also a job or a placement uh, for your for your spouse or for your partner and that's great kasi kalimitan di ba pwede mo nga madala pero wala namang trabaho so mahirap although you're earning um, generously pero di ba if you if you are, if your partner is like sanay na magtrabaho talaga, eh, mahirap yun eh. Kasi for, like, let's say two years, wala siyang ginagawa. So they always try. This, the, the dual career program is very good because they always try to put a place for, for your spouse. Okay? Some are more advanced than others. So I would, that's why I'm, I'm mentioning Germany. Germany is very good at that. They, they, there's a system in place, as they always do. There's a system in place. Some other countries, medyo, they're still catching up. But at least there is that that they really try. So, yeah, as I said, you have a work contract, contract and then um, possibility to spend two years. Um, uh, yeah, but this is for the Global Fellowship it doesn't concern you. But for, for us, it's like 12 to 36 months. Okay? Ah, yeah, but before that, if you have been uh, to Europe the past three years and spent one year, let's say you've spent one year in Spain, you cannot apply in Spain. You have to apply in the other, you know, another state. So you have to apply in Portugal, for example, or any of the neighboring areas. Kasi nga, the idea is mobility. So if they, they always state like, okay, if you've spent 12 months there, you're already a local, so hindi ka na pwede. So you have to go to another country, okay? So if you've had your studies or your research in, in one country, and it's more than 12 months, you have to find another country. Hirap na. So, I, I mean, maybe here it's not such a problem, but for, for my other friends it's a problem because they want to stay, like they want to stay in Spain, but they cannot. So they have to find like Portugal, that's the, the closest place. So that's just one little, little technicality. Okay, the rice, as I said, and I really want to emphasize on this one, um, there is a, there's a staff exchange, it's up to four years, but you can also... Um, but the cost covered, the secondment of staff members is from one month to one year. We, it depends on the, you know, it depends on the program that they're, they're putting for. That's why you, have, you just have to read what it says. But the usual thing is one month uh, to one year, although it's up to four years. So, pwede siyang parang, okay, one year, tapos wala, tapos babalik or something. If it's going to be like a big collaboration. 
But I think the better one is the mods. Kasi karamihan sa atin, we, can, we can't leave, for, uh, leave uh, our work for a long time. So one month pwede. Two months maybe. Three months. Ganun. Basta, uh, ano, kasi yung parang term of service din, pag gagawin mo siyang one year, ano yun, times two, di ba? <laughs> ba? Pag one month ba, ilan? One month din? Ay, one year? Six months. Okay, at least. So, gawin nyo na lang six months. Parang six months yun balik. Kasi tihado eh. One, pag one month, bibigay six months. So, gawin nyo lang six months. <laughs> Parang fair. Okay. As a university, you can conduct short-term short staff exchange, exchanges within a joint research project. And this is great because sometimes we lack like the expertise in specific uh, topics. Like let's say, uh, when it comes to cryogenics, let's say. So there's like a lot of experts on cryogenics, pero we, and we want to build the expertise here, pero wala tayong ano, uh, professors or wala tayong researchers. So we can invite them to come here, okay? And so, or if you have a specific program that you want to develop, but you don't have like the faculty yet, you can use Maritiri Rice to invite people uh, to come here who have the expertise, they'll be, I don't know, it depends on, on how you do it. They could be like full faculty or adjunct professors and they will be paid by this program. Okay, so that's great. You know, you don't need to pay for them. Okay, so staff of any nationality can participate. All types of staff are eligible, as I said. And then really, the idea is the sharing of knowledge. So, um, and then also the idea of like, from discovery, you know, uh, to an analysis, to sustainability. And that is why the bridging, again, of the bridging of science to market is very, very important when it comes to rice. So as I said, it doesn't, it's not only limited to university, it's also to institutions. So if you can identify an institution where you can benefit from an exchange, you can actually propose for it. Okay, the innovative training network this is for early stage researchers. So four years, the duration is four years. Some differ. Uh, some pro uh, ITN projects, they're less, than three, uh, they're less than four years. Like mine was two years, for example. So it depends, right? Uh, but you can, um, you can apply for funding until, and, uh, with these funding schemes, EPN, the EID, or the EJD. The EJD is, is usually under the, uh, also, there's also a program with the Erasmus Mundus. So the Erasmus Mundus, it's now Erasmus Mundus Plus, because it's not just, before it was only limited to master's degrees, now they have joint doctorate and they also have skills training. So they have, that's another thing that you could also explore, uh, the, the Erasmus Mundus. Okay, and there is also the co-fund, um, it provides funding, for funder, uh, and it's all stages of research careers. We can, we can look at that in the, in the next session. Okay, and so far, these are the budgets that have been given. It's really, it's, it's a very big budget is given. Okay, so RISE, for example, which I, I mentioned, it's 80 million uh, euros until, until, and those are the deadlines if you want to have a a look, those, those are the times. So, pwede pa. Meron pang IF until 2020, and then there's a rise that's, the deadline is, the next deadline is in April. And there's also co-fund. So, marami. Actually, marami. So, you can take a look, take a look at that, uh, depending on what you want to apply to. Okay. And then fourth is really on addressing societal challenges. So, these are some of the challenges that have been identified. So one is health. So we can take a look at that. That's, I think that, that fits uh, the work that PASC is doing. It's on demographic change and well-being. There's also food security. So there's an emphasis on sustainable agriculture, uh, forestry, marine and maritime. Silima is very, very strong with that. So we can collaborate as well. Inland water research and the bioeconomy. They look as well on secure, clean, and efficient energy, smart, green, uh, green and integrated transport, the one I showed you a while ago, and then climate action, environment, resource efficiency, and raw materials. There's also a line that is on Europe in a changing world, so it has a lot to do with 
inclusive, innovative, and reflective societies, and secure societies. So this is more on uh, sustainable peace building, uh, conflict transformation, and all those things. That's protecting freedom and security of Europe and its citizens. That's the line, but they include, because how can they, uh, how can they talk about security if they are also like parang insular? So that's why they're, we have that. So just an ex as an example, the budget for health, demographic change, and well-being is 7.4 billion. Okay, so these are the main objectives. Understanding the causes and mechanisms underlying health, improving our ability to monitor health and to prevent, detect, treat, and manage disease. Uh, older persons to remain active and healthy, and to test and demonstrate new models and tools for health and care delivery. So if you want to be a part of it, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's the age 2020 under Societal Challenge 1. And, and in, the, in the portal, you can see that. There is uh, Societal Challenge 2 is on food security, and the budget, is, the budget right now is 3.8 billion. So, um, the, the objective is on population growth, uh, environmental contamination responses, agriculture, forestry, and industrial sectors of food and bio-based products. So these are for societal challenge too. So you can see that as well. So it, it depends, you know, which you are interested in, which ones you're interested in. Three is a secure, clean, and efficient energy. There is now a 5.931 billion budget for this, ang laki no? Pag ano, pag tina times, ano naman ngayon? 50, what is it? 57? So kano ba? Two euros, not pesos. Yeah, 59. Parang mga ganon no? 60-ish. So it's really a lot of funding for energy. So the the focus on challenge three is on energy, um, and also on especially on clean energy and alternative. Uh, sources of energy, which we actually we, we have a lot of uh, best practices here in the Philippines. Societal challenge four is smart, green, and integrated transport. I've, I've showed you a particular call that is active right now. The budget for this is 6.339 billion. So if you want to be a part of it, um, it's usually on transportation to boost employment, economic development, welfare, and global trade. In uh, connections between individuals and communities, like our one perfect project would be like the urban slums. So instead of like looking at urban slums as places of poverty, you can look at urban slums as spaces for innovation, right? So that's a nice, uh, nice program to have. Reduction of societal dependence on oil stocks. Reduction of traffic congestion. Ay, yan na tayo. Yan. Expert ay dyan. <laughs> We are one of the experts when it comes to uh, experiencing traffic, so that could be an opportunity to work together to understand and how, how we can really address traffic congestion and air pollution and most importantly road safety, okay? So you could send a proposal here. There's also creating a sustainable transport system. All right. Societal Challenge 5, there's a budget of 3.081 billion and this is on climate action environment, resource efficiency, and raw materials. So this is in securing access to raw materials and clean water, protection of biodiversity and ecosystems, investing in innovative solutions to support a green economy. In Europe, there's also a, there's such big talk about the circular economy and the blue economy. So I think it's starting to, to, to be uh, a focus here as well, All right? So the circular economy uh, is like a step further that it's like from waste to beauty. So a very good example would be like, you know, coffee. You know, when you, when you grind coffee, you know, coffee, you know, um, coffee grounds, used coffee grounds. So you can use that for scrubs and stuff, no? So that's why um, we made a proposal before, uh, but not, not to the EU, but uh, on, a uh, on a smaller scale, <laughs> which was from waste to beauty. I say waste, you know, that's from beauty shop. So uh, that's one of the things uh, that could be submitted here. We haven't submitted it here. It was a bit a very small project, but and it's also I was just helping. I was not the principal investigator. Tackling climate change as a multidisciplinary uh, priority. 
So again, the approach now is not just on one discipline. If you can have like three, four disciplines uh, working together, uh, the idea is to have like a more collaborative, a more inclusive approach to addressing societal problems. And uh, management of water and waste. Nako, kailangan, kailangan natin yan, especially sa Manila. Kaya nagbabaha sa atin kasi nagka-clog sa ilalim. No? So that could be one thing that we can have a collaboration in. Societal challenge in is Europe in a changing world, inclusive, innovative, and reflective societies. There's a 1.309 billion euros uh, that is uh, allocated for that. And really, this is for the reduction of inequalities, promoting social fairness. So ito, lahat, identify and tap sources of growth. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, focus on innovation. So innovation, open innovation, um, innovation of business models, public sector innovation, there's a lot of talk about public management, how do you improve public management, and of course social innovation. So as you know, um, Europe is, uh, has some, there's a tug of war when it comes to the migration. On one hand, like you, they, they do understand that they have to open their borders, but at the same time, uh, they have to make sure that they protect their citizens. So to find this balance is something that they need help with. That's why they have this, this societal uh, challenge number six. So also to support research in, in innovation in European heritage, identity, history, and culture, probably we don't fit there. But uh, we can help them when it comes to external action and international cooperation. There is a shift now, for example, when we talk about, we don't talk anymore about aid you talk about technical cooperation, and the idea is that it's not a bowl out. And the idea as well is that uh, if you have a partnership with the Philippines, it's not that, uh, it's because you also want to help Europe. It's not just because you're helping the Philippines. You know, it's just just because you're funding doesn't mean that, you know, it's a, it's a unilateral, unilateral thing. It's the Philippines also contributing, all right? Uh, also, um, is if you want to join, these are their main themes until 2020. Migration, transformation in the industry 4.0, which was what we talked about in the last event, and governance for the future. Societal challenge seven is on secure societies, protecting freedom and security of Europe and its citizens. This is also something that they can learn a lot from us, you know, because we've, we've had um, great strides when it comes to uh, conflict transformation. So this is all about managing public security through combating crime and terrorism, protecting communities from natural disasters, tackling illegal trafficking of people, drugs, and counterfeit goods, development of new technologies for the protection of, uh, protection of citizens, and requests for privacy and compliance with fundamental rights. So, right now this is an open call. There's an open call on food and, secu uh, food and, food and security. So these things you can look at, but we, we will look at it together. Uh, and this is, there's also um, all of these things, 735 million, I don't need to talk about this uh, very much, but I wanna look, give you an example. So in the website, you will see funding opportunities and then this is the topic, you know, uh, all the, pub the publication date, uh, the deadline, and then this is January 23, 2019, which is still open if you want, if you're already ready your, with your proposals. So you can see it in this site, ec.europa.eu slash research. So you have to put the research in because I, I know Mela and <laughs> you've had problems with that in the beginning, right? Na hindi siya lumalabas kasi if you just put until EU, lalabas yung tender. So you're not, you're not procurement you're looking at research uh, collaboration. So you have to put the research in, okay? But we will do that together in the next, uh, in the next session. Okay, so some of these things, meron siyang mga, pero pwede na natin itong gawin together. And all of these, so this is another one, sustainable solutions for bio-based plastics on land and sea. This is, uh, Philippines could also, the Philippines could also be a part of it. It is still open. It's open until the 23rd of, uh, of January 2019. So the focus area is connecting economic and environmental gains. This the Philippines can apply. So if you, if your institution, this is already open. 
So if your institution is ready, you can already uh, become a part of it. Ano pa bang iba? So ito yung ano, that, that's okay, you can read it on your own. Uh, tapos meron yun din yung sustainable wood value change. Ano pa bang ibang? Ito yung mga, I'm just showing you the ones that are open that the Philippines can apply. So far, so far as per my research since last time. Ito yung open. <laughs> but it change, as I said, it changes. So it's good to like keep on opening it, keep on updating uh, yourself on it. So meron din yung a, a vaccine against African swine fever. Pwede din tayong uh, maging kasama dyan. Ano pa bang iba? Awala na. So yun na yun. Yun na yung last. So this is really the participant portal. So I'm encouraging you to really have a, um, not only with PASCN, but also individually, to have a presence here. Okay? So please find the time uh, to create your profile. Tapos mamaya, I will show you uh, how, how to do that. So this is also, if you need a partner, you can also search for a partner there. So kunyari, meron na kayong grand idea, pero kailangan yung tatlo, di ba? Three more. You can also go to the website and find uh, your partner there. And you can really, you know, you can put like the topic, you can put the, the type of organization, pwede mo piliin yung country, uh, kahit yung city pwede, di ba? So you can, you can do that. Uh, and then there's a lot, uh, there's a specific line on international cooperation. Pero ito yung mga iba-ibang ano din. Iba yung mga uh, societal challenges. So meron sila, meron yung mga topics. Meron SMEs, meron gender, iba ba? And our net means, it's a network, I forgot what it means. Tapos meron yung iba, intellectual property, so depende sa, sa, sa topic. Okay, uh, key messages and then we can have a break and then you can go to the next session and you can ask questions uh, to me later. So key messages. Horizon 2020 so far is the largest research and innovation program in the world. The next message is that you are eligible. Okay, Philippine nationals or institutions are eligible either as individual researchers, so you as you going there, or as part of collaborative projects. Participants from Philippines automatically receive funding from the you meaning to say, of course you have to submit a proposal. Pero madali na lang kasi meron tayo kasi meron tayong overarching agreement eh, uh, with with the EU under NEDA. So parang parang legit ka na, you know. <laughs> Hindi na like unlike uh, country, unlike other countries that they have to show that they have something. So they know that we have a research agenda. They know that we are active when it comes to research. We, they know that we have big ideas. So Pwede na. It's just a proposals, okay? So you only need to submit your proposals. And next is um, that Horizon 2020 offers exciting opportunities in all research fields, okay? Um, and it's very good for your network. It's also good for your career. It's also good for the growth of your institutions and your organizations. And of course, that international cooperation is really the key for us to move forward. Okay, so join now. Join now. So these are the sites. If you want to talk about this, one of the ways that you can create traction actually is to use a hashtag that you already know about it and that you're looking for partners. So that's the hashtag InvestEU Research. That is the participant portal. Please save it. That's very helpful for you. And of course, uh, later on, I'll give you the, the email that you can uh, write to uh, for your facility once you have the proposal. I'll give it to Dr. Francis. Okay, so session one done. Oh, 12, 10 minutes lang naman, okay lang yun. <laughs> no, 10 minutes naman. Thank you, so I see you in the next session.